Hello everyone. How are you guys? Sorry, um, a few seconds late. I was having some technical difficulties um, removing the case off of my phone so I could put it on my awesome little stand. I just want to check that we are live. Yes, we are. Hi. Hi. Happy Thursday. Happy Facebook Live Day. Um, happy August. How the heck is it August? I just can't even wrap my head around that. But anyway, here we are. And a great topic today. Um, talking about how to best prepare your body for going off the pill. Um and taking back the power over your hormones, right? Because the birth control pill um, kind of puts everything at rest in your body hormonally. So the, you know, just a little backstory, right? So you go on the pill, it, it, um, the hormones that you take, it's typically a mix of estrogen and progesterone, and that manipulates your body so that you don't ovulate. That way you're not fertile. And then there's that placebo pill that you take for the week, and that actually causes a de deprivation of estrogen, so the uterine lining sheds. So you're not really experiencing a period at all on the pill. It's, it's called a withdrawal bleed, which just means it's a withdrawal of estrogen. And so that's, that's what's really happening. So the whole bleeding while you're on the pill was, you know, when the pill was created in the 60s, um, they did that to make women feel normal, that they were still getting a monthly menstrual cycle. But really, it's just a fake bleed. It's, it's just a withdrawal from estrogen. So the lining sheds, and you dispose of the lining, and then you start your pills, you know, your non-placebo pills again, and puts the body back into that, um, that non-ovulatory state. The lining builds up, you know, so you could feasibly not ever take the placebo and there would be no difference. But so what the pill does, um, the way I see it in my, in my little, you know, science brain is it, it puts the body in a holding pattern. So it just kind of hits the pause button on all your hormones. And that's why a lot of women go on it because they have lots of hormonal challenges and difficulties. And so they're typically prescribed the pill not for birth control reasons, meaning not to avoid getting pregnant, but more because they're having hormonal symptoms that are interfering with their everyday life. So in a perfect world, you'd see someone like me before you're going on the pill and I help you manage those hormonal symptoms. And then if you need to go on the pill for actual birth control reasons to actually prevent pregnancy, you know, I think that's something to address for sure. I do think it's important. I have a handful of, of young girls in my practice or that I've worked with over, you know, 13 years of experience. And I, I'm not opposed to going on the pill by any means, especially if it means we're preventing pregnancy in girls who are just becoming sexually active. So I think it's a very responsible thing to do. Um, but I also think that it's not something we should stay on for 16 years, which is typically what I see. And so, I mean, for those of you, you most of you know who I am, but, you know, I, I authored this book, um, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. This is my best-selling book, which is so exciting. Um, I also authored a previous book, Chill Out and Get Healthy. Let me grab it so you can see it. Um, here's my baby, my first baby. Um, both these books, I really address the hormonal situation and the birth control pill because it's really important, um, especially when it comes to women. You know, what I see in my clinical experience, and you know, I've been, I've been working with women and hormones for almost 15 years, is that a lot of women are put on the birth control pill to manage their symptoms, things like migraines, things like painful periods, things like cystic acne, things like... Um, just general discomfort, fatigue, you know, heavy bleeding, irregular cycles. Um, and, and then it's kind of just left unchecked. And then they wind up in my office in their mid-30s and are ready to have a baby. And, you know, they're going off the pill and they want, um, they want to get pregnant right away. And so what can we do, you know? And so I typically, you know, if I can get you early enough, I recommend that we go off the pill at least six months prior to trying to conceive. Um, there are, of course, these cases where women go off the pill and get pregnant right away, and that's awesome, and we've all heard those stories, but majority of the cases are not like that. And um, 
truthfully, that's because the, ovula the ovulation system in your body has been on pause for, call it 16, 18 years. And so the body is rusty. That's how I see it. It's just, it's unaware. It doesn't know how to do its job anymore. So, so we need those six months to really retrain the body and then also balance out the hormones, balance out the kinks in the system. And so, you know, in a best case scenario, right, I get a woman who's coming to me prior to wanting to conceive um, and wants to just go off the pill, get her hormones in check, right? So, you know, and even, even better still, when I do have girls that are on the pill and are going to stay on and we know we're not going to try to conceive for maybe another year, I will still get them on the entire, yes, you can get pregnant protocol. So the diet, lifestyle, supplements, um, all of this regimen, because that really starts the process. Because the, the key to when we go off the pill is that the liver really needs to be crystal clear, functioning, functioning optimally. And if it's not, then what's going to happen is all of a sudden as your hormones start getting created again, it's going to go, oh my God, what the hell is this? And you're going to get kind of all of the symptoms that you possibly had in the past, plus maybe even worse ones. Or things like polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's a very classic thing I see in the clinic where girls were most likely polycystic when they, before they went on the pill when they were like 17, 18, 19 and never got really the diagnosis, but they had the classic like cystic acne, you know, the facial hair, um, weight gain, irregular periods, right, just hormonally all over the place. And instead of that being treated or addressed, they were just put on the pill. And so then they, they come to me, they've gone off the pill, and their PCOS symptoms, as they get longer off the pill, so like by month three, and they haven't made any changes to their diet or lifestyle, all the PCOS symptoms start creeping back. It takes a couple months, but things really start to kick in. And that's because the liver needs more support. The liver needs you to be cleaner on your diet and lifestyle so that it can now process out those extra hormones. Um, you're not extra, the new hormones that your body's creating again, right? You know, it's, it's it, you know, the way I look at it is it's like, we really need to, you know, um, practice this preconception phase or just even if you're going off the pill just to go off the pill this pre you know this transition phase right because you could just go off and if you're not trying to conceive that's fine you know I would always recommend you discuss with your doctor or healthcare practitioner that you're under the care of you know get their advice get their take on how to best stop the pill and then, you know, so you either do that right away or you can wait a month or two and you just start on, you know, the clean living protocol, if you will. So you really want to avoid processed packaged foods across the board, right? Anything with added sugar. Um, really go back to this whole protocol I have outlined here, you know, and I mean, I can read it through with you, but it's basically we want to avoid... I say gluten, so especially though, if you're going to do wheat, it has to be organic. Um, avoid genetically modified foods. Avoid soy, unless, unless, unless it's fermented, sprouted, non-genetically modified soy products. And even then, have no more than two ounces, max three ounces a week. Um, no added sugars, so soda, art, you know, sweetened beverages, um, obviously candy, things like that, anything with added sugar. So you have to start reading your ingredients. Pesticides. So that means you want to stick with the organic foods. Pesticides are one of the biggest culprits here because they contain what are called xenoestrogens. And so they mimic estrogen inside the body. And if you're trying to support your body in regulating its own estrogen levels when you go off the pill and actually also detoxifying your body from the the um, synthetic estrogen you've been taking for so long on the pill, you also need to get rid of all the synthetic estrogens in your diet and in your lifestyle. So pesticides are a big no-no. So that means organic. Um, artificial sweeteners, another big no-no because they just mess with the blood sugar. The blood sugar affects hormones. So, And also they, they're very toxic to the liver. So what we want to do is clean up the diet in the best way to support the liver. So 
you know, it's basically getting back to the basics. You're going to eat protein, you know, that's um, preferably, not preferably, should be always organic. If you're doing animal protein, grass-fed, um, that your fish should ideally be wild. There's a great website, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium has um, a, a, a link on their site called Seafood Watch, and you can go there and you can see what is the best seafood in your area that's sustainable, non-toxic, etc. Because there are some farmed fishes that we can have, it's just area by area, um, it differs. So you want to be eating lots of protein, and you really, really, really want to up the ante on green vegetables, like a ton of green vegetables. Ideally, you're doing like four to six servings a day of green vegetables, particularly the ones, so I'm just kind of going through my book because um, I did write it, but you know, it's always good to refresh. Particularly the, um, the green vegetables that are they're called cruciferous vegetables because they contain something called indole 3 carbonyl which helps your body get rid of excess estrogen. Um, so things like um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, bok choy, garlic, those are all, and then you want to do spinach, kale, chard, collards, kelp, um, and that they should all be cooked and it cooked in a fat too because that's the best way you're going to get the nutrition from these these green vegetables and i'll just break it down for you a little bit too so raw vegetables are not necessarily harmful to you but they're a harder to digest and b with that harder to absorb the nutrition that you need so green vegetables are really high in hormone balancing hormones particularly the fat soluble hormone vitamin a which is really important to not just healthy, beautiful skin, but um, balancing your hormones. And if you eat the vegetable raw, you don't really get the nutrition. But if you cook it, and I know that's contrary to what a lot of people say, that you get all the nutrition, but um, there are studies that show that you, the nutrition comes from cooking. You don't have to saturate. You could lightly you know, blanch or steam the vegetable, but when it's cooked that way, it's just easier for you to get the nutrition out of it. And then eating it with a fat really helps you absorb all of the nutrition. So I will say cook your vegetables in something like ghee or coconut oil, or if you're having a salad, um, have it with some avocado or some nuts or like seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, um, nuts, almonds, you know, uh, walnuts, Ideally, nuts are sprouted. They're much easier to digest as well, but I don't want to get off on that tangent. But, but that your, your diet really gets rid of all the processed crap. No soy, no gluten, no sugar, no pesticides, no GMO, no artificial sweetener. So we're getting rid of all packaged processed foods, and we're going to a very basic diet where you're eating protein, vegetables, fat. Some fruit, fruit is fine, it's summer, you know, here in New York, and um, I, you know, I probably have one to two pieces of fruit a day right now, you know, I'm doing low glycemic, like berries, I'll do apples, pears, we do have some peaches right now because they're so freaking good, um, but that's really how you want to eat to best support your body and your liver to detox. Other things to support your body as you're transitioning off the pill doing um, hot water with lemon juice, uh, juice from half of a lemon squeezed um, every day is phenomenal. Really good for flushing out the liver. Um, make sure your coffee, if you're doing it, or any caffeine, that it's organic. Um, caffeine, especially coffee, carries one of the highest pesticide loads, so those xenoestrogens are really present in coffee. Um, I say limit it to one cup of coffee a day or one cup of caffeinated beverage a day as opposed to there's other um, hormone experts out there that say no caffeine at all. I don't think that that's, I think that's extreme. Um, and I'm all about uh, living a very livable life that feels doable because I obviously I know that I am putting quite a few restrictions on you guys. So one cup of coffee a day, here are the key steps with the coffee has to be with food in your stomach, cannot be on an empty stomach, and needs to be with a fat. Same thing, when you drink coffee or tea with a fat, so I add like coconut cream to mine. You can add, you can do a bulletproof style with coconut oil and butter. Um, a lot of my clients add the collagen peptides to their coffee, which really gives you the protein um, and some fat. And that really helps your body assimilate the caffeine differently, so in a way that it doesn't affect your hormones. If you drink coffee on an empty stomach and it's not organic and you're not adding any fats, 
it's going to screw up your hormones even more and put a lot of pressure on your liver. So if you really want to keep coffee in your life, like me, I love my coffee, um, drink it with a fat and not on an empty stomach. And then there's a whole other, so then there's the lifestyle. So that's our diet stuff, the best support. Then we want to think about um, everything you're putting on your skin, everything that you're coming in touch with in your world. These environmental toxins are called endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs for short. I talk all about them in, in both my books and in my upcoming book, Body Belief. That'll be out in um, early 2018. Um, going through the edits right now. Um, but everything you put on your skin gets into your bloodstream in a ma matter of seconds. And most all commercial products contain chemicals that are endocrine disrupting chemicals and they screw up your hormones and they put a big load on your liver. And so if we're looking to support the liver and clear out excess hormones, right? Cause that's what we're trying to do going off the pill. We want those hormones out so our hormones can come in and we can take back the power over our own innate hormones. We gotta clean up bath, beauty, skincare, household cleaning products, that all has to get cleaned up. Um, I have a whole chapter dedicated to it in both my books, in both Yes You Can Get Pregnant and in Chill Out and Get Healthy. So read through those. I have lists of the chemicals that you need to avoid. Um, my whole rule of thumb is if you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. So it should be made of things like an oil you can pronounce, um, essential oils, no fragrance, no parabens, no DEA, no TEA, no, um, you know, benzones, like there's just tons of these chemicals and they go in and they manipulate your system and they really aggravate your hormones. So if I'm getting someone who wants to take back the power over their hormones as they're tr transitioning off the birth control, it's not only diet, but it's really skin care and environmental toxins as a whole. It's really important to look at everything as a whole. Plus, you want to make sure you're sleeping well. You want to make sure you're supporting, you know, your adrenals, as everyone talks about in, in the Western world and functional medicine world and in Chinese medicine, we call it your kidney energy. So years of being on a hormone replacement um, does take a toll on all of the organs and, and in particular the liver and the kidney and the spleen in, in Chinese medicine, which are also the master hormone um, organs. So sleeping enough, you know, getting to bed before 11 and sleeping seven to eight hours, really important. Managing your stress, you know, which is, you know, if we could take a pill for that, that would be freaking awesome. But, but we can't, shit happens in life and we have to learn to not take it all on, not carry everyone else's burdens with our own, um, find time for meditation or just peace and quiet, you know, time for ourselves, ways to nourish ourselves, ways to love ourselves and be kind to ourselves. That's just supremely, supremely important. And um, one other thing I pulled out of my fridge that I have my husband and I taking is this, can you see this? Liver nutrients um, by Seeking Health. I believe I ordered this from um, either Dr. Axe's website, A-E-A-X-E, -E, or Chris Kresser, K R. E S S E R. He's a, and also an acupuncturist. I, I went to graduate school with him. Super bright guy. Has his own line, and I love his products. Um, but so this really helps support the liver. And so it was just something um, I went on. You know, we left the city. We moved. We moved into nature, and I want to get all that city gunk out of our system because just breathing in that toxic air day in and day out and. And just, you know, um, I'm always open to trying new things and seeing how they work and how they support our bodies and our health. And so this has milk thistle and acetylcysteine, also known as NAC, which is really great for supporting the liver. Taurine, which is an amino acid for supporting the liver. Um, alpha lipoic acid and then um, betaine, I uh, can't even say this, trimethylglycine. So... Basically, this is a formulation of awesome supplements to help support the detox pathway in the liver. And that's what this is all about. Like, so I already live that clean lifestyle, right? And I, you know, I sleep really well and none of my skincare or household cleaning items um, are toxic. But I wanted to take it, you know, I just wanted to try this out because I, I, I have a lot of women that come to me and they're looking for, oh, thank you so much, Beth, for posting that. Um, they're looking 
for best ways to support their health and and help their liver process out the excess hormones because it's not just in the birth control pill it's it's in your everyday life and, and if you want to take back the power over your hormones which you must because you're here and you know about me um, then you you want to do everything you really do you know it's not just oh you know I cut out sugar because Amy said you know and and that's awesome that's a really good first step and I'm proud of you and I'm cheering you on but I want to take this you know if you really want maximum results you know then you got to follow the whole thing and dive in and uh, you're worthy of it you're gonna feel better and you know you're gonna appreciate it and so as you transition off the pill if some of your symptoms start to come back I want you to you know what I always say is one of the biggest things I think I do for a living is teach people to live in their body again and that means feeling their symptoms, recognizing how they feel on a daily basis, seeing, um, you know, seeing their symptoms and understanding that this is your body speaking to you. And so you should work to find the best ways to support it so that those kinks, as I call them, in your system, you can help work them out, right? Um, establish the ease and, you know, you know the balance in, in your body and your hormones and so you know when those symptoms creep up if they do they're there's they're questions that you need to answer right that I want you to start finding the solutions and and the best solutions are really cleaning up the diet managing the stress cleaning up bath beauty skincare household cleaning items supporting your liver um, and and not giving up not trying it for two weeks and saying oh I did that it didn't work you know or I tried Amy's protocol it didn't work for me three months minimum commitment uh, like a serious commitment of at least three months and you will see radical changes in your hormones I absolutely guarantee it um, and that means sleeping that means everything that's on your skin the air you breathe the thoughts you think the food you eat those those five things supremely important to help you take back the power over your hormones um so let's see you guys have any questions for me i don't see any questions coming through so it must just be a pretty straightforward kind of conversation well if you're going to watch this at a later time and some questions come up post them in the comments i'll go through later today and i will answer them all and just a reminder, you know, these are my two books that are loaded with information for women of all ages. This one's kind of for the younger generation, maybe women in their late teens to 20s. This is women 25, 45. And listen, even if you're not thinking about getting pregnant right now, this book is really just a guide to balancing your hormones because a woman that has balanced hormones and is in optimal health is fertile even into her 40s so um, keep that in mind this is a great book to really guide you on balancing your hormones and then of course you can find me on my website amyrop.com there's tons of ways you can work with me I have online courses online guides online coaching in my clinic everything and anything I also have my amazing skincare line that is non-toxic and pure enough to eat um, what can we use instead of sugar well, um, I recommend that you stay under 10 grams of added sugar a day. So you can still use some sugar. I would just recommend that it's organic sugar. You can also use um, organic raw honey. You can do blackstrap molasses. You can do coconut sugar, which has a much lower glycemic index than regular sugar. So it will affect your blood sugar differently. Um, you can sweeten things. You know, if you're making a smoothie, you can add like a date. That would sweeten it up. Um, fruit. You know, but also as you wean yourself off of sugar, you will crave it a lot less. Like I can't even tolerate sugar anymore. Um, there's some sugar in this, like my Synergy. Let's see. So there is um, four grams of sugar in this whole bottle. This is as sweet as I get for the day. And, you know, but play around. Slowly start to, to detox yourself off of the sugar. And even if it's just one to two teaspoons a day, you're doing great, you know, because most people are getting like 20 teaspoons a day. And we want to cut that way, way, way down because sugar is so inflammatory and really um, doesn't number on our hormones, but health overall. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up because I got to hop over to my secret Facebook group. 
Um, okay, let me answer this. For the hot water with lemon, I see a lot of people drinking this in the morning on an empty stomach. Would you recommend drinking it first or later in the day? Yeah, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach is best. And you can do either hot water with lemon or hot water with apple cider vinegar. Both have similar effects. Um, oh, you're welcome. It's so weird how my questions are coming through. I guess because my phone's like this. Oh, they're coming through funny. But, okay, I'm going to wrap up. Any future questions, put them in the comments. I will circle back through. You guys will not see me next week because I am on vacation. And I'm going to be without Wi-Fi. So, you can't even reach me if you wanted. And that's going to be really nice for me. Um, so, I will see you in two weeks. Have a wonderful two weeks. And any questions or comments or anything, I'm here. So, write them. Bye.